Okay, welcome back to Fast Hit Performance then. My name is Tim Davies and again we're back in the attack shack dropping truth bombs on your personal battlefields. And I want to explain something to you today about diversity and inclusion. Middle-aged white dude talking about diversity and inclusion. But there is someone who's written to me who knows what they're talking about and it's an email. So another thing I've done, I've changed the camera setup and the mic setup. Hopefully it's a bit better for you. The last video was a little bit jerky. I didn't think the quality was that great. So hopefully this is going to be better. Right, I'm going to read an email to you. Now, the reason I'm reading the email to you because it makes a lot of sense what the guy is saying. Uh, he's been a practitioner of DNI for a long time, even before it got corrupted in the way it got corrupted. And I want to explain to you what he means when he talks about some of these terms because I've done a lot of reading on this over the years. And I think what we see in things such as NHS and education, governmental organizations, the military, is the wrong DNI. It's the DNI they think they should be doing and not the DNI they were supposed to do. And that is probably because it's been hijacked by companies such as Stonewall, who are, as we know, race grifters and they have, or, or gender grifters, and they have uh, obviously a reason to push this stuff because they get remunerated for doing so. So I'm going to read this email to you now. It's been sent in. Uh, he's seen one of my videos. It was the one where I talked about the Top Gun premiere, Top Gun 2, and they did not want any white guys. So the Royal Air Force said, um, well, the Royal Air Force didn't want a white guy to go. They wanted to show how diverse they are because they thought uh, being diverse meant pushing black people in front of the camera, okay, and not letting white people. So really what we think diverse means in the Royal Air Force is not white men. So anything but just not white men. Men specifically, by the way, but women come a close second to that, of course, especially if they're white. Email them. Uh, Hello, Tim. Having just viewed your video posts on the diversity issue, I'd like to add to the conversation. I have written curricula and facilitated diversity and inclusion seminars for 25 years for both private and public sectors in the UK and the USA. Along with the distinction between management and leadership, diversity is one of the most misunderstood of all soft skill disciplines. I've seen it become hijacked by the woke culture, weaponized and misused as a convenient aid to promote a skewed agenda, an intent which the mainstream media endorse. That's important to note. Remember divide and conquer, okay? It's much better that we're raging each other, okay? Be distracted from everything else happening in the world. Who owns the media? Think about that. And who said the media could be the media as well, all right? Tell one individual you're Napoleon Bonaparte and everyone will think you're mad. Convince a critical mass you are Napoleon and people will start to believe you. Point is, etymology matters. Words are individual tools that direct attention. Very important, very important that. Clever use of language allows one to direct people's attention at any point on the compass. Advertisers and marketing giants exploit this in every aspect of their work, as do spin doctors, lobbyists and such. The combination of a skewed agenda, clear use of language or clever use of language and the power and influence of the media has created a conglomerative force that has driven the diversity agenda into its own back passage. His words, not mine. I may not have the power to halt this nonsense, but I can offer a better perspective drawing from my 25 years as a diversity facilitator. This man's got some knowledge. Told you about dropping truth bombs. I dropped some truth bombs. This is a nuclear truth bomb coming at us. We're not going to survive this one. We're going to be saturated in the truth, fam. Of course, race, ethnicity, and other superficial elements were discussed, but only in passing. They really are not that important. I focus most of the day on ability and values. That value word, guys, we're going to come back to that. The standards and values of the individual and why that's so much more important than the colour of your skin or who you like to have sex with, all right? It's values. This is what I've been saying before. Why is it values? Because it's about cognition, about how you think about something. That's what's drawing people together, is how you think about something. And I will cover this in a minute, because it makes me angry what the Royal Air Force is doing, because they do not know, okay? They have no idea. Right, these two facets, uh, ability and values, of human capability should be at the core of any diversity initiative. Focusing on Black Lives Matter or the colour of one's skin only serves to antagonise the narrative. I repeat, words are attention directing tools. But of course, that is a part of the woke agenda, to stir the pot and keep everyone on edge and nervous as they go about their business. Please allow me to offer a simpler, fresher and non-toxic approach to diversity and inclusion. This is important. We're loving this. This is important. Nisha 
and Gita were both from India. They shared a similar upbringing in the Hindi religion. They went to the same school and college and both became occupational therapists. They were both middle class and decided to move to the USA. When I first met them, we became friends. They shared an apartment and worked in the same hospital. After only a month or so, Nisha had to move out as she didn't gel. Had, she had to move out as they didn't gel. Gita was very conservative. Nisha, very liberal. Gita wore traditional Indian clothes. Nita, a humanist, uh, Gita liked to stay in of an evening and read while Nisha went clubbing. Gita was devout. Nisha was a humanist. And Nisha preferred to wear jeans and a t-shirt. You see where this is going, he says. Race, ethnicity and the like have little bearing on diversity. Human values and ability do. Do you see what this is saying? It's nothing to do with the skin color. We'll come back to this, huh? We'll come back to this. Let, let the man finish. Let the man finish. Jeez, we're rushing ahead here. These two individuals parted as friends due to their distinctly different values. Yet on the surface, they did not appear diverse. And there, you will find over and over again the true nature of diversity. Conversely, you can have a black lesbian woman working alongside a white heterosexual man. They share similar values, which brings them together. And as a team, they achieve a great deal. Do you see what diversity was supposed to be? Do you see it's been hijacked by the bloody grifters out there? It makes me so angry. I'm not angry either. I'll sort those problems out, luckily. Right. People, therefore, who may seem very diverse on the surface, may actually complement each other if they have shared values. I'm not gonna talk about it yet, I'm gonna let the man finish. Let the man finish. So much to say on this, <clears throat> so much to say. Right, it is such a shame diversity has been corrupted and used to advance a toxic agenda. Even when values are not shared, a shared intent or strategy can allow people with different abilities, skills, and values to come together for a common goal. As a skilled facilitator, it is my job to bring this latent potential to the surface and in doing so, prioritise human performance over something as trite as age, sexual orientation or whatnot. Ability, shared values or a mutually shared common intent is what matters most. We're almost done. I'm afraid the current diversity agenda is now far too powerful and its traction unstoppable. Like a runaway train is a sad state of affairs that my approach to diversity, one based on shared values rather than race, etc., has fallen on deaf ears. As the great Mr. Churchill once said, people stumble upon the truth, then brush it aside as if it never happened. I'll finish on a positive. I've enjoyed facilitating this most fascinating subject. I can tell you without, without exaggeration, every class I've run has enjoyed moving away from the usual diversity topics of sexual orientation, color, etc., and found exploring core values to be far more worthwhile and valuable. The majority of people want to work well with others. It's part of the altruistic pro aspect of our evolution that defines the human condition. It is the minority that is skewing the agenda but it's a squeaky wheel that gets the oil. Let me talk about that in a second when we come to social justice warriors. Your video post has reignited my interest in the subject, but I feel the monster has become far too big for me to battle single-handedly. Good luck to the RAF and other organizations as they continue to grapple with the elephant in the room. I'm not sure they can advance any sensible approach to the diversity conundrum until they begin to recognize it's about values and ability, not, <laughs> he swears here, I won't swear, not what, color you are. So this man's got enough experience, you know what I mean? A loud, you know, that's the whole point. He's, he's you know, he's, he, he is, he is um, speaking some truth here. Now, what do I want to talk about? So we talked about the values. Now, if I, I've got, I've got, uh, I'm that guy who goes, I've got black friends. Online, I follow loads of black dudes, all right? I follow loads of white dudes as well. And it's not because they're black or white that I follow them. It's because our values are really aligned. Some people I follow because our values are not that much aligned and I'm interested in why that is and that's how we learn, isn't it? But so I follow a lot of black, I mean, black, black conservatives in America seem to align with my principles, which are of self-discipline, um, the self-work, you know, the, the protection of the family, the, the, the doing the work, the bringing the money back, 
they're not being a victim, they're not asking for anything, um, the self-containment, you know, they're taking responsibility in something, you know, I run a rowing club, that kind of thing. Uh, and, and there's a lot of black conservatives out there that seem to be doing that. You know, they're putting shirts and ties on, they're putting suits on their kids and everything, they're going to church on Sunday, uh, they're teaching their kids discipline. King Randall's a dude I follow on Twitter. If you don't follow King Randall, he's a young dude. I think he's like 23 years old. He built a school for black kids in his community to teach them the essential skills, such as how to install a toilet or, or fix a car tire, stuff like that, because their, their, their fathers aren't at home. That's not necessarily a father problem about the father not being at home. I used to think it was, and we digress. But a lot of the time, uh, a woman uh, may be trying to catch a man and they have a child and the, the man's not, he's like, I'm not staying here. So it's on both sides. They don't, we're not chastising black uh, fathers in America, nothing like that. Okay, but King Randall's a good dude to follow. There's some other guys I follow as well. Uh, but I'm not following them because they're black. I'm following them because we've got the same values. You know, we understand it. They say something, I'm like, yeah, right on. And I send them stuff, they send me stuff. I'm like, yeah, it just happens that they're black and I'm white. In fact, King Randall, when I first followed him, I remember he, he was uncomfortable with, with people following him that were white. Uh, and he actually said it later on. He was only a young dude at the time, building up his school. It was very evolutionary when I first found him. And I remember later on, he actually kind of explained in like a video, um, you know, he, get, he was like, I guess, you know, us black and white guys are, are trying to do the same thing. And I didn't, I didn't realize that at the time, you know. So we've got the same values. That's what I'm saying. And that's exactly what this guy's saying in this email. There are some bits I want to bring out, though. Talked about the shared values, didn't we? That's the whole point. The problem with the Air Force, I find, I don't want to hit the Air Force for this because it's kind of dull to me. You know what I mean? It's not of interest anymore. I've, I've kind of moved on. But I look back on the Air Force and I just wish they would change this because I think it's quite toxic. I think um, I had uh, an email from someone. They've been told not to speak to me. We know they've been told not to speak to the press. They've been told, these are the people in the Air Force, if you leak uh, an email or you leak a piece of um, information out of the Air Force or whatever, then you're going to lose your job. Okay, they've all been told that. But the, the sort of anger inside the service is so much that they, they can't change it themselves internally, some of these people. So they need me to speak out on topics out there. They can't even speak to their bosses. The direction is from the top. So it comes down from the Chief of Air Staff, Sir Mike Wigston, who I served with on a squadron over there on Tornadoes. He's a nice dude, I like Mike Wigston, but he's got this thing about, um, probably about fairness or social justice, and he is most definitely a warrior. Um, so he believes that we should bring in, we should, we should sort of mirror society. Society, United Kingdom, 13.8% ethnic minority, 3% blacks. He's trying to mirror that. In fact, the email I was, shown a bit of, said that he had directed beneath for the careers offices to have 12% entry for, they wanted 12% blacks in the service or minorities in the service by next year and then 14% after to get that 13.8. Luckily, some seniors, there, there is a legal department, you can't do that, there is a legal department within the Air Force that turned around and went, hold up, you know, we just, this is not, we can't do it anyway. We've got 2.5% minorities in the service right now, about 16% women, uh, out of the, the 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 sex, the sex or gender, whatever you want to call it, I'm a bit gender critical me, so I say out of men, women, 16% of women, higher than the other service, but only 2.5% minorities. And he wants to make that 2.5% this year into 12% next year. A ridiculous uplift. And what will happen, of course, by doing so, is you won't be bringing in the white people. Probably the white man's going to be discriminated against. And any discrimination is bad. You can't solve discrimination by more discrimination. Does that make sense? So the careers officers were told to overlook white applications. That was what I was told. I don't know whether that's true, and I haven't seen the email to that effect, but I've been contacted and people would say, you wouldn't believe it, Tim. It's worse than you think. It's pretty horrific here. You know, one of the dudes was like, I work within the careers department. He didn't say whether he was in an armed forces career office or not. He said, but we had a directive to interview and to, to bring forward the names of, of what would be BAME, I hate that term, but ethnic minority candidates and women which meant, of course, we removed and didn't reply to uh, what we felt were, were white men, especially white men. Now, you could bring a civil case against them for that, for discrimination, you could. If I had those emails and I could prove it was done, but I know the legal department in the Air Force tried to stop that. So there is some hope out there because you can't do that, right? You can't do it. You can't do it. So that's what diversity and inclusivity was supposed to be. It was supposed to be about recognizing the shared values you have and moving forward. The same thing with psychological safety, which is an interesting one for me. I read this the other day as well. Psychological safety. People think that psychological safety means that when someone says something to you or they tart or they wink or they, you know, whatever, or they, then you can complain against that person. In some way, they've, they've caused you a micro trauma. 
And that's not the case. The whole point of psychological safety was allowed was to allow people to say things that were unpopular in the workplace. So I could say in the workplace, I think this diversity policy we have here is fundamentally wrong. And I would be protected because of psychological safety. It would be a safe place for me to be able to talk in the workplace. So a senior officer couldn't say to me, you're wrong, I'm gonna post you to the Falkland Islands or whatever for eight weeks or something to, or put me on re-education training, which seems to be happening around, right now with the police force in some constabularies with the is it non-hate crime incidents, I think it is, or non-crime, non-crime hate incidences. So they're not a crime, they're not a hate incident, but they can still register you. I think some forces have stopped doing this in the UK now, but it was a good way of paying attention to things that didn't really matter for the police, they get the statistics up. So then they could send you to re-education and, and charge you 60 quid or something for the re-education of your mind. That's like thought police stuff and everything, isn't it? That's 1984 territory, that's national socialism, of course, which we saw rising up through the 30s, didn't we, in Germany? So there's that. There's that, there's that values. And my issue with the Air Force is it says, I think it's saying, look, if we get more black people in, <laughs> and use black people as a generic term, let's, or mom, let's say minority, let's get, we allow more minorities in, we'll get more diverse thinking, we'll get more cognitive thinking, you won't, you'll get the same just with people with different skin color. Because people that join the military, right? They just want to join the military. I'm not going to keep this too long, guys, all right? I won't keep this too long. So you won't. What you will do is stop someone else who may be better. Because remember, we're talking about a meritocratic hierarchical structure that base that bases itself on, on performance and consistency and effort and reward and application and you know, ingenuity and ability and all these kind of things, okay? You don't get that just because you're black. You don't get that just because you're white. You're not going to get promoted up the ranks. We need the best people in. Now, the best people might be in the black community. They might be in the Hindu community. They might be in the Sikh community. Um, they may be in the white community. They may just be. Now, the justification for putting people in front of a camera like this and, and saying, have a look at all these people, is so that people in those communities turn around and go, oh, there are these people like me in the Air Force. And the balance, of course, is can we still do that? It's always a balance without deleting the white man. And I'm here as a white man to say, you can do that if you want to, but every time you do delete the white man, I'm going to put a YouTube video up about it. I'm going to make it look stupid, as stupid as I can. Because what that's going to do then is it's going to hopefully make me think twice. Because inclusion, remember, should be inclusive. It shouldn't delete any race. It shouldn't delete any gender, oh, I hate that, or any sexual orientation, should it? We know that, right? Should, that's what inclusive is about. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. So hopefully, I think I've, I've spoken enough there, I think, and uh, hopefully that gives you something to think about, guys. There's probably more I can add to this. I really wanted to just try out the camera as well and the, the mic. Let me know in the comments if you think it's better. It's a DJI pockety thing, I think, and I've got the mic thing here as well. Let me know if the audio is good for you. Let me know if you prefer this. I've got to read off a screen here. Maybe I can put it next to the screen a bit closer so I'm not always looking away from you. But I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching the videos. Really good support and it just makes me want to make new videos, all right? So hopefully that worked for you. Notice I'm not having to go at the Air Force, am I? I'm a fluffy guy. What can I say? I'm not having to go. You know I'm not having to go. I love them, you know? There's a lot of love to me in the Air Force, all right? Also, just as an end state, um, I, I did speak to someone in the service about the red arrows and the culture at the moment is not a toxic one. I did say it was last time, okay? So last time I said it was a toxic culture. It was in the past, apparently. It's not now and it hasn't been for this season. This season, they have gelled together, all right? And they are a good team. I just wanna say that. When I'm wrong, I apologize. Apologize to the team, all right? I didn't speak to any journalists or nothing like that. I don't do that stuff, okay? That's not me, didn't come from me. I didn't know half the stuff that was in that um, news article in the sun. I don't wanna talk about the news article in the sun because I don't want to talk about the red arrows. I want to talk about stuff that's important to me and society, which is this stuff here. But I will apologize to the red for saying they were toxic, right? Because they're not. I've been told that today. I believe the people that tell me it, because they're, they're friends of mine, got a lot of hours and jets with them, all right? That's it. Till next time, guys, Tim Davies, Fast Shit Performance. <laughs>